Haters dirty shout to this mud flood, your front stoop Acres and acres of haters growing out the same root That hit you quicker than poverty and two major arteries Have you moving and soft shooting like who made you property Black faces, sambos, and a tie for last place Let facts stay, we like wildcats in a rat race At that rate, the state stay ahead of the mall Standing out like Mount Kilimanjaro So through this bluegrass, follow sorrow Blacker than the ghetto you fear, you disappear Like the future of the ghetto you near Where index fingers bring their heavy metal you hear Block stars, low yeah. guns, as fiends battle for crumbs Come, travel through slums Try politicking with the pushers They block decisions while motherfuckers overlook us Under the radar like helicopters on the slide Crept in with hoods on this KKKY KKKY, molded what you think it is Ain't just tobacco, some bourbon and where horse racing live It's for my mob makers I keep my flash tip, live where the grass crib Stepping with my blood KKKY, molding what you think it is Ain't just tobacco, some bourbon and where horse racing live It's for my mob makers I keep my flash tip, live where the grass crib Stepping with my blood Try and play Mike Vick and stick a dog in his fight Your auto layoff on the beetle, your mosquito is fight The MC's too dark, the producer too white Fam, the lyrics too loose, man, the beats are too tight Man, we parry blows, we bury folks I met Deacon in 1998, yeah. Clayton County Penitentiary Yeah Okay He was in there for stealing cars Yeah I was in there for... Whatever a white man could possibly do to get put in prison, which I'm not sure of in America. Embezzlement, motherfucker. Don't you remember? Embezzlement. It was embezzlement. The whitest uh, crime. The whitest of crimes. It's white collar and it's white in general. Uh, then we started rapping from drug money. We weren't selling drugs. We found the money and it said drugs on it. <laughs> Somebody had written drugs on the money itself. It wasn't I, actually. I started smiling. Drugs. Sorry, I broke character. Let me get my mean mugs back. Yeah. So anyway, this drug money then led to a record that you might know as "In the Club." That wasn't. That wasn't our record. We a rap for food. 2001. Uh, nah, we met uh, Underground Live. Is that what it was called? Underground Live. He used to throw an open mic at Morehouse University called Underground Live. <clears throat> Some dudes I was cool with. Morehouse College. So Morehouse College in chat. Atlanta, you know. Sorry, Morehouse <laughs> University. Morehouse College. Uh, <laughs> Some people that I was recording with and friends of mine used to go over there a lot, so I started going over there. I met him, you know, through that. And we started working together, and he moved back to Kentucky, and new people that knew Natty. I mean, honestly, Shiesty might have been the go between. I don't, you know, I don't really know how these two met. Actually, Sonny Styles. Because me and Sonny Styles really were in the penitentiary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not for embezzlement. But not for embezzlement. Uh, I was getting my uh, Omar on without the gangers. You know, the there were drug dealers that didn't believe they had the right to sell drugs. And I believe I had the right to take that drug money. Because who were they going to tell? And, and apparently they, they told the police. Apparently they told. So. <laughs> he took my drug money. <laughs> we'll go get him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's basically it. I mean, they met through mutual friends, obviously. So I met through Deacon, Natty. So we met in like 99, 2000. Yeah. I killed him. He, uh, yeah, he murdered Mr. SOS and put him in a shallow grave. Uh, <clears throat> no, I mean, SOS was in the group for really like a year and a half, technically. What was it, two, maybe two, late 2002 to 2003. Um, it just didn't work out, you know. I think SOS was at a different time in his life. You know, I think that he's in a much better place now. Much better place now, you know. He's done the growing that I wanted to see him do as a friend. Now, you know, he's where he needs to be. But back then, not so much, you know. And I feel like, but even sonically, it was going in. No one to go in a different direction. Yeah. As a producer. As a producer. I mean, there's like songs that people we wanted to go in a direction that never would have existed. <laughs> never would have. A piece of strange <laughs> wouldn't have existed if SOS was still in the group. I mean, it, SOS had an SOS had an issue with the concept of piece of strange. Like he didn't even want to name the record that like we started talking about the idea of a piece of strange before he even left the group and he was wholly against it and that's when i realized that i probably creatively is going to work out so
I mean, <clears throat> I think you can describe it like that. I mean, you can say it doesn't sound like anybody else, but it sounds like everyone else. If that makes sense at the same time, you know? So I don't think that... I don't know that we ever sat down and said, hey, let's make some shit that sounds like whatever, but like... You know, it's funny when we sit down to make a piece of strange and on the Dirty Acres, we were seeking to make music that people that uh, influenced us made, like some hey, of our right. heroes from the South, UGK, yeah. Ghetto Boy. Like Dirty Acres came out sounding real, you know, Goody Mob-ish, yeah. you know, but it wasn't so it was, much that we were like, we want to make something that sounds like Goody Mob, it was more so... I wanted, consciously like, wanted to show our roots. Our yeah. roots, yeah. you know, yeah. so, yeah. so yeah. that's why, yeah. with the, yeah. that's why, you know, I mean, even Southern yeah. Underground, though, it's like... This just I mean, hell, even, you know, even Will Rap for Food has interludes and stuff that kind of, and they, they kind of make mention of, like, outcast references. I mean, hell, Will Rap for Food is an outcast. At the, you know, at the end of the exit with a sign saying Real Rap for Food, face balled up, because I ain't in, uh, whatever he says, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't in a healthy mood, or whatever the fuck he says, but the bottom line is, is that even the first album was a reference to an outcast line, you know what I'm saying? So, it was always there, but I don't think stylistically it was there enough for us. We really wanted to, like, show where we came from, and I feel like we weren't doing it, we weren't doing it yet, you know? So, A Piece of Strange is the first record that was truly us. You know, we were rap for food in Southern Ground. It was, it was us, but yeah, you know, it was just us making rap. It was just like make some rap music, whatever. But like, Piece of Strange was, was to me the first record that was truly us. And even then, that was a concept record, so it wasn't truly them. It wasn't us per se. Dirty Acres is really the first record where us as a group, myself included, because I rap what two or three times on that record. But like, <clears throat> that's the first time we actually really took like the personal stuff that me and him had on Will Rapper Food because there's some stuff like Family Ties stuff like that that's personal but the Sonics weren't us right. and then A Piece of Strange was like a lot of storytelling and stuff but the, the Sonics were us Dirty Acres was like the Sonics were us and the, lyrics. and the lyrics were us like it was a lot of personal storytelling you know Georgia Things I Dream those are all like that's us talking it's not like a concept record so like a Piece of Strange, you know, might be our most widely heralded record, but Dirty Acres is the first record that was, like, truly hit our stride. Like, the, this is what, you know, what we sound like. We generally start with, like, a single idea. Yeah, we'll have, like, a single idea. <clears throat> and kind of build around it in the instance of like on urology on urology was built around to me dream which no made when we were working on a piece of string technically yeah technically well actually dirty acres dirty around acres. the dirty acres time i made the beat to dream with tunji i made the beat but I, I wasn't really happy with it i want to work on it some more it didn't really fit the record <clears throat> Dirty Acres technically ends with Things I Dream. That's like the second to the last song on the record. And I had this other beat that was kind of built around a sample that's saying, see what I'm saying? But it didn't fit there. Dirty Acres ends with Things I Dream, essentially, and Mexico is part of that, like, dreams, meaning, like, reach, reach for your goals. You know, so the last two songs on Dirty Acres are literal dreams and dreams as goals. We took that, and the next record, all of our records are connected, if you really pay attention. The next record is a, solely about dreams. So there may be a four-year gap between Dirty Acres and Honorology, if people don't pay, pay, usually pay attention to that kind of shit. But the last two songs on Dirty Acres connect like Legos to Honorology. So Honorology was a leftover beat, was based around a leftover beat from Dirty Acres. It didn't really fit, and we said, hey, what about a concept record about dreams? And build on a whole new thing, and then make a record around that. So Dreams is the first song on there, and then we just kind of built a record around it. Swallow oxycontins to find solace, need a fix, so you hit some blockhead for his wallet. But your gun jams, and the cops come to take you. Now that bullet ain't the only thing that's caught up in the chamber. Because that's life. Fuckers depressed. Nah. I'm <laughs> uh, literally. Nah, literally. Uh, <laughs> I think we're just not afraid. We're just not afraid, man, to be vulnerable. I, I, 
like spectrum I think, of I think human relatively emotions. speaking, comparing us to other rap acts, you know what I'm saying? But like, when it comes to like the spectrum of human emotion, I feel like we did it at all. Cause we have our silly songs like Never Come Down, you know, and Thugged Out Since Cub Scouts, and, you know, different. We always have songs that aren't sad. And the only way that I would think this is a problem if is if there was some, if there was a pattern with our fans where they gravitated wholly towards the more fun stuff. But the fact of the matter is, that's not the case with us. You know, our, our most popular songs are Mike Like a Memory, but Drunk Dial. Or at the same time, you know, with the weed songs, with the introspective songs. The fact that all of that stuff is popular with our fans. Now, if if every time we drop the sad song, people are like, oh, I like it, but like, they didn't get hyped to it. I mean, you can, you can come to the shows and you can tell. There's just as much of a reaction for a song like Mike Like a Memory as there is for a song like KKK Never Come Down or KKKY or whatever right, like right. I don't I think at the end of the day that like we like taking people on that roller coaster ride yeah because nobody really feels one way all, all the, the time. time you know what I'm saying and, like I, and, I, and I, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say that we're easily top three rap groups of all time in that category of being able to do everything I don't think that there's very many rap groups that can do that you know when you think of you know most rap groups they have a style you know but they don't really like go there they can't do a banger and then do a funny song and then do an introspective song and and make it all work like it's not forced very few groups outcast maybe you know the roots could do it you know the roots are somebody who could do it you know totally yeah met metaphors and like you know i mean to give these guys a lot of credit like I think that people sleep on them as MCs because there's literally nothing that they can't do. Like, there's literally nothing I've ever asked of them to do. They're like, yeah, I can't do that. Or they failed miserably in trying to jump that bar. You know, the fact of the matter is, is that there's really no rap groups. When you compare, when you have to look at who to compare us to from a thematic standpoint or what we've accomplished song by song, like topics and stuff, there's hardly anybody who's accomplished that. I mean, not to fucking pat myself on the back, but goddamn, no. Yeah. What do we have to do? What do we got to do for you motherfuckers to show you how nice we are? Jesus. Maybe be more humble. <laughs> humble as motherfucking planet. You can't name a motherfucker humbler than me. You more humble? No. No. no I'm more humble. <laughs> I mean, I think that uh, I think that any producer that's sample based, you know, if you talk to the Pete Rocks and the anybody, you know, their their ear for samples is going to be based around what their parents kind of brought into the house, you know, and my and my dad or some relative, you know, wherever whatever that record collection that they had that their parents had or their family had, that's kind of you know where they go. I mean, I'm not saying that that was like my favorite music but when i was two when i was three what records my dad were playing i mean that's you understood that's yeah it's normal like human psychology like that shit seeped in my brain and so that's part of the yeah that's kind of assimilated to, to my person i assimilated to my person part of my so i mean but i still you know i still dig for records you know i use samples off the internet i'll burn i'll get rip cd for a sample i don't give a fuck you know what i'm saying wherever, whatever the source i record something i'll play something i mean whatever makes a good sound wherever i hear a good sound you know i don't really have like one way of doing it just whatever whatever works you know, I've, I've yeah i mean i've literally like sampled off a tv show like by putting a line into my tv and you know what i'm saying so i don't you know whatever whatever works i've sampled off youtube <laughs> don't give a fuck fuck that shit y'all know how we do i mean we probably don't know how we do that's if there if we had more success we definitely get sued yeah yeah, you know? this is true we, i mean i think that's fly right there on the, on the which is why we're okay <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, but I mean, the, the, it's a it's a monetary thing, and it's really just in the states. And I, I think don't that like that's... talking about this out loud. <laughs> well, I think I think it's I'm important. growing uncomfortable. No, I think that it's I think I think that it's important to talk about, especially for our European fans, because I think European fans have a disconnect with how bad the legal system is in the United States. Yeah. So I never have. I never have issues with any fans in the states about not talking about samples or not really discussing it. But European fans get so angry sometimes. Not all of them, you know what I'm saying? But they get so mad, like, oh, what's the sample to this? I'm like, yeah, I can't really. I can tell you, uh, you DM me or email me. I'll, t- I'll talk to you about it. But like, I can't let you just. I can't just tell you on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Like, buy your drugs. Why you? Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's it's. I'll go to four four five Canyon Road. There's a really nice guy named Mike. There's a really nice guy named Mike who sells the best cocaine you'll ever find. Not three times. And and you know what I think. You know, you know what I think we should do is I think we should build a website that has drug dealers' names and addresses, and and that's you know like that's who sampled who sample.com. That's basically a list of drug dealers yeah. with their houses. Yeah. It's a smorgasbord for fucking legal bullshit. Oh, you want to know where to sue somebody? Right here. But but <laughs> guess where? People guess don't where? understand that who sample.com is almost like snitching. It's snitching, yeah. and not in the way. And listen, not in the way that like DJ Premier was like. Stop snitching. It's not about a code. It's about the fact that, like, if you love something, why are you trying to destroy it? Because you're, a, I'm not saying that that's your intent. Yeah. And but it if is you, a, and it is the way that DJ Vern said it. Right. It's not the dumbass way that kind the Cameron fucking tried to explain it. Right. It's not. Citizens can't snitch. Right. Right. Snitching is trying to get your own self out of trouble by selling someone else. Right. And, but, and, and can I add on? Can I add on to that? And if I add on to that, and I'm not not to, to fucking you know leg drop who samples, but it's a great example. Is that again? They're based in Europe. It's not a U.S. based website, but they are part of the Complex Network, meaning Complex Magazine. A uh, complex network of advertisers. We know people that are in that advertising com- uh, uh, network, and those websites make eight, ten, twenty thousand dollars a day off advertising. On the back of what? Of getting me sued? Fuck you! you know what I'm saying like, fuck you. That's like, yo, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a snitch on you and get paid twenty thousand dollars a day to do so. Fuck you! You know what I'm saying like. It, they that's know. ridiculous. They know. they know. The people who run the site. But they play know. dumb. You know what I'm saying? They play dumb and just collect the money, and it's, that's just how it is. You know sorry so, if your uncle owns who's handled. Yeah, sorry, you know. <laughs> but, at, but at any rate, that's the point, though, is that they don't. It's one thing to, like, you know. It, it's one thing to, like. So we, we fly under the radar, but that's part of the reason why we do it. Because I don't want to. Because, yeah, because I don't want to change our art. It's really about the music. I don't want to change the quality of my music. Because, now, if there was a way. Really, what it comes down to is copyright law. In the United States is antiquated and it sucks. And if there was a way for me to just go, you know what? I'm a fill out this form, send it in, I'll pay you a little money up front, I'll promise you 50% on the back end, make sure that Bill Withers actually his estate gets this money, not some fucking company that owns all his publishing. Some fucking, you know, white dude in New York. It's never the artist. It's never the artist. It's It's always somebody, you know, whatever. If there was a way to do that, I'd clear every sample. I'd clear every sample. But what do you want me to do? Stop making art because it's illegal? People do a lot of things that are fucking illegal, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because, you know, like, like there's, I've, I've reached out to the families and estates of plenty of artists. They don't have really a problem with it. They love the idea that. Especially with us, because we're not making booty shake music with their with their parents' music. Yeah, yeah. I mean, where the samples that were you up, uh, for example, Georgia. You know, the 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 sample for that we didn't take that in a direction that's disrespectful. And so, the person that I sampled it from, I am actually Facebook friends with his son. He loves the fucking song, but he doesn't control the publishing. So he loves the song, and he loves the fact that his dad's music is getting passed along to future generations that might not even be familiar with it but he's like I don't own the publishing so there's nothing I can do about it but but I I love y'all's music and I love that it's positive and I love that you don't 
you don't um, bastardize the original intent of what you sample. You, you respect what you sample and you don't sit here and be like, yeah, I'm going to sample this song about death. My baby daughter died. Let's, let's talk about strippers. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's talk about strippers. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. So, you know. Probably made the saddest strip club song ever. Saddest strip club song ever. That's for me. Yes, uh, we're putting No out the group. Actually, this is his last tour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, from <laughs> that was fair. Actually, it was, <laughs> actually yeah. it was supposed to be at noon today, and you're late. Yeah. So you're late, I'm you're actually late. not in the group anymore. Yeah. So I don't even know why I'm asking questions. Right this is overtime. No. no, we've definitely talked about it. I mean, I've, I've always produced. You know, it's just like I've just haven't been, I haven't pushed myself to be as prolific as them. So like, I actually started with Chasty Christ was in the room. Uh, before that, I produced the album for a cat named Just Me. It's called Tragedy and Dope. And then Niggas with Latitude with Shice to Christ. Then Still Motion for Natty. But, but No had beats on the Still Motion as well. But I mean, I, I've never been in a big rush to be the producer, man. You know, it's just been a, a slow process. And now I like where I'm at with it. And I'm, I'm ready to contribute to them. Because I've always been confident in no sound. Connor Ling was like, when me and no met, that was the premise of the group, that the sound was based around no's beats. And then I would bring the gospel church soulful influence vocally through hooks and raps. And over time we've, you know, kind of transformed. But like, a lot of people don't know, I, I produced the track on Will Rapper Food. 616 Rewind. Okay. You know, so it's like, I've always contributed, even on Sloppy Seconds, I produced a song called It's Over, featuring Blue Collar. I had us produce a song by Kenfo, Over the Hills. You know, I've always slid beats into, you know, kind of lend the sound. I mean, I go a step further and just say he's co produced every cunning linguist record to an extent it's it's not like i just send him shit and he's just like okay you know we always have suggestions or we always talk about stuff or so. i've always sent no samples you yeah. know for cunning linguist stuff or even side projects even death is silent i help here's samples there's always you know there's always like, input but i just think that's you know we have a very fluid way of operating so like right. and for a long time to be honest i was trying to sell beats to major artists right you know so like that was my focus you know, and like a lot of times my my production style's always been a little bit less underground, so to speak. You know, like a little bit more polished, a little bit more into a pop category. But now the underground is caught up. The underground's kind of caught up. It's like the worlds have kind of combined, you know. So rap, we can basically do anything now, we do anything. So we, and our fans are on board, so I feel like we can pretty much do whatever the fuck we want going so forward, we, we, as long as it's dope, you know. Pot in the brownie pan Got me baked faster than the brownies, man Have you ever been high from the inside out? On the lawn in my boxes like the insides out <laughs> Carjack a caravan and just ride out In one of them cloud whips with the OnStar chip I'm so high, I hope you understand this shit Jane was plain till I ate her, then she came too quick Drink water while I'm rhyming, but I still can't spit My mouth is pure cotton like a t-shirt's coffin If fake means potatoes, then my brain is all brighten Talking to myself with my neighbors all watching But going in the house proves way too hard When I fall in the front door and land in the backyard Physics don't apply, what? midgets in the sky Where? Skipping around my head saying, Negro, you so high Damn have to bridge the gap between the energy that something would have on a record versus what it can have what it can have on stage especially with our very 
Yeah. Okay, if you wanted to hear the record, you just would have stayed at home and got the rest of it. Yeah, they suck. But so, we have to, yeah, and we have a very, <laughs> what? I mean, like you mentioned before, though, is that, like, we have a, you know, our sound is very, like, every song doesn't, you know, it's, like, MLP, for example. They are known for a very specific energy. So when they get on stage, they fucking murder it because it, 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 it works perfectly for that on the stage thing. They don't necessarily have to do anything but go up there and, and just work, murk those records, you know what I'm saying? So... But the thing is, we don't, yeah, this is our people, but like, we don't, we're not like them in that we don't necessarily make live records all the time. Like, our shit doesn't really transfer that well sometimes, so we have to be creative with how we take it to the stage, because it doesn't necessarily work unless we put some thought into it, so, um, I just think it's all about, you know, connecting with the crowd. That's pretty much the only way you can get away with that, you know what I'm saying? If you make music that is built for the stage you can bring that same persona. Yeah. But if you know you're not making music, you are even thinking of the stage when you make it. And, it, and, it's, and then you come to the stage and you just perform it exactly the way and you it's made funny. it. <laughs> and it's funny because some, you know, another nugget of terrible advice that Tone Deaf has given me in my career. I'm not saying everything he's given me is bad advice, but I've learned a lot of lessons from his advice that I didn't take. <laughs> and one of Tone's early... We love you, Tone. Yeah, we love you, one of, one of his early advices to me as a producer and us as a group was that that you should create songs with the stage in mind. Now, I, I, I scraped off the burnt toast aspect of that <laughs> and took what was left and said, okay, I'm not going to literally do that because I'm not going to to sacrifice the quality of something just so it can work on a, on in a live show but that's a new york mentality it's a new york mentality thing and that's why i was going there because that's my point is that it's a new york mentality thing to be like how does this work on a stage i don't give a fuck how something works on a stage is it good if it's really? good we can make it work anywhere on any stage and that's why we're you know in Paris I mean, but, right you, now. but also like when we approach the stage it's kind of like you said about us in interviews it's like the stage is an opportunity to show you how, how charismatic we are. Right. That we're just, just bubbly, fun guys that like to be silly. And, you know, it's like, but then our music ourselves. don't always show that. But, like, when you see us in person, when you get us in a room one on one, you see that we're really just fools. I mean, our, our name was kind of lingless, for God's sake. So, mm -hmm. like, off that that off top lets you know that we're not, we don't take ourselves as seriously as our music. So, when we get on stage, you see that. You know, it's not like, we never even made a conscious effort to say, we make sad music, so we gotta be, we gotta do something to offset that when we get on stage. We just got on stage, and people was like, damn, this sad, I thought they were gonna get up there and like fucking cry, like we gonna be passing Kleenexes around yeah. the crowd. And it's like, but in, I, in, right. between, in between sad songs, we're cracking joke, fart jokes and shit. But on that's, stage, that's just who we are. But that's why at this point in our career, this is why we have like, we have studio albums, and we have like the sloppy seconds and the strange journeys because to me a studio album has to have some kind of heft to it you know when you talk about classic records you know it, it, it's i'm not saying that you can't be silly and make a classic record to me a good example of that is like bizarre ride to the far side right far side to me that's a fucking classic record but i don't feel like it gets the true admiration it deserves because it's silly but there's shit that they're doing on that record that's fucking amazing that people just weren't doing and like just the vocal tones and the production is amazing and like that's a classic record but like people don't really give it the credit it deserves because it's silly you know they're rapping about fucking masturbating and just random shit you know what i'm saying and, and whatever but it's but it should be, like, to me, you know, a record like that should be held up with Illmatic. But Illmatic is, like, dark, and it's New York, and it's moody, and, like, you know what I'm saying? Outcast, you know, at Aliens, it's dark, and it's, and, and, like, and that goes beyond rap, it's rock records, you know what I'm saying? Rock records that are, that are considered classics. Again, it's, you know, it's, it's these concept records, it's, it's Pink Floyd, The Wall, and it's, it's, you know, you have to have that health heft or people don't really take it seriously. So, so we save the fun stuff for the strange journeys and we, you know, we take the, the, the shit that we do in the studio serious. Go ahead. Pretend to be dying to 
get a part of my mind I've been once inclined to tell you part of my spine Part of my shine Comes from the distance you are from a star While you compiling your wish list Is this business emotionally invested Or built from the sweat of our flesh pressed against it Love is war, sex is a weapon The mind is a mind so watch where you're stepping Thoughts that are kept in wet dreams covered in face cream Come to fruition in positions used to make steam Feelings are just filling in this half fake scene to make X-rated in the NC-17 See everything she got, she not shy Our love below, so drunk we most high Then wears off when what we wears on Again I turn away when what we share is gone So for the crime. I'm sorry, it's just the way we designed, my dear. We shouldn't be here. Talking about one at a time, though. Guess you got me changing my mind slow. Says that voice in the back of my spine as I awaken at the moment. If I can quote Kanye here. <laughs> Wanna be on my record, but they don't want me on they shit. <laughs> like, yeah, they want to be on our record, you know, but whatever. I'm not dissing the people who we work with. What I'm saying is, is that you can answer that question better than us in your own mind. You can, you're, any, any fan who wonders, oh, well, you got this guy in your record and you work with this guy, and like, but like, why isn't no producing beats for these people? Or why isn't, why don't they ask Deacon to be on their record? Or I don't know. You, you tell me why that is. I don't, I don't know why, but you know, I think that it just comes down to, like I said, like Kanye said, you know, I, I'm not saying it's a lack of respect, but I think we're just totally we we we're we in our own lane. You yeah, know what I'm saying we in our own we're lane. Misunderstood. We're misunderstood. So like people people don't understand that when we work with them, we don't have anything. Right. You know we're not trying to blow you up. We're not trying to use you to blow us up. When we ask you to do music with us because sonically we think you yeah, we sound the best on the album. You sound yeah. good. That's you know simple. What I'm we like don't have an do. agenda. Yeah. We've never had an agenda. Yeah. We we just have. Like oh, we should work with this artist because he's about to blow. No, 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 that's never been the approach to working. Right, there's so many, there's so many layers to this shit. You know what I'm saying? And like the way that we operate don't necessarily fit within the way this, the industry operates as well. It never has. Yeah. And, like, and, and, and I and I will and I will speak for the underground slash indie artists that we work with. You know, a lot of the a lot of those guys don't reach back just simply because like take like slug of atmosphere for example you know he's offered to like bring us on certain tours and stuff like that this is our homie but like i can't produce atmosphere records because well a they have ant but b i use too many samples for them you know what i'm saying like and so they see me as a sample based producer like that's just how they view me that's, that's a lot of they don't they don't necessarily it's not their job to like give me the credit that i can do more than that to be like yo hey no i want you to produce the next felt record you know me and mers are gonna do you know slug and mers do a and from a record. rapper standpoint there's no telling me what the hell i'll say so not really yeah exactly so so it's, it's i don't think it's a conscious thing with a lot of 
them. It's not like they don't like us. They wouldn't be on our project. I mean, it, they, it's not like we're paying them money to be on it. They get on our shit because they respect us. But when it comes back to the reach back and like, hey, we want to get you on our stuff, it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, I guess probably a lot to do with family too. I mean, you know, we we work with whoever. We have our family on our shit and motherfuckers that we just respect from a musical standpoint. But but rap is like an egocentric game. So like, it's hard for somebody to be like, Daddy, you're so dope. I want you on my record. That takes a lot for a rapper to say that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not easy. So if you notice like some of the best rappers in the game, they don't necessarily reach out to other great rappers. They got their homeboy, you know, that's whack, you know what I'm saying, on their record or whatever because they're just... It's an, it's an ego thing, you know what I'm saying? And so another sure. aspect is we've always been so self-contained since the beginning yeah. that we're like off on an island. Right. And for a, a lot of the industry and the game, it's out of sight, out of mind. And we're just not in sight yeah. of a lot of people. Because that's not our thing. So no, we're, we've not, always we're definitely not like mad about it, you know? Or, you know just we wanted to press really hard, you know, I guess. But yeah, I mean, I, you know, to we, your we've point. We've never been like big networkers hit the scene and sh shaking hands, kissing babies. Yeah. Yeah. We just work with who we think's dope. And it just so happened that in 2009, we thought Freddie Gibbs was dope. But look where he is now, you know? And, and we worked with Big Grit years ago, and BJ years ago, and Anna Wise years ago. And we worked with CeeLo right before oh, Narrow Park. Yeah, so. I think the thing that we don't want to lose is the fact that those artists, like, Matt, we bump in the Mac or I bump into Freddie Gibbs, they don't ever wonder what we want from them. Yeah, you know, they so don't. We can always it's never talk been that way and feel like regular fucking human beings because we don't want anything from them. You know what I'm saying? Like, we work together, we chill together, we smoke together. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're just people. So. I mean, but everybody that you can, everybody from that standpoint, pretty much everybody you can name from that standpoint, we've offered whatever they wanted from us first. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, Freddie Gibbs, I did production for him. He had beats for me before we ever got him on the track. Cause his management hit me up like, hey, you want to produce some stuff? We're working with this dude named Freddie Gibbs. This was like literally as Miseducation came out, whatever year, 2008, whenever that was. I was like, yeah, he's dope. I'll fuck with him or whatever. So they actually had beats before we actually got him on a track. Yeah. It was So it was like, I, I gave something to them and I didn't expect anything to re in return, but when you deal with people like Freddie Gibbs, who's just a straightforward motherfucker, right? right? He's gonna be like, oh, you gave me some beats, I'll give you some raps. You know what I'm saying? And then you maintain a friendship, whatever. I hit him up with my solo album, it was like the most seamless shit ever. Yeah. Hey, Gibbs, you wanna jump on this track with me on solo real quick? Yeah, shit. Send, send me the beat. Send the beat. <laughs> and I had it, it, he had it to me like a day. <laughs> like, it was like, there you go. Yeah. I mean, yeah. same thing with Macklemore. I mean, it's not, yeah. you know, Macklemore was, you know, we put him on bills with us when he didn't necessarily have a name for himself and he was just, he had like one record under his belt. Back in like 2005, you know, he opened for us in Seattle and we just had a friendship ever since 2009. He was on Strange Journey 1, I guess it was. And I mean, you know, we just went from there. It's like we, you know, we looked out for these people, a lot of these people first before we asked anything of them. And even then it wasn't like, what can you do for us? It was just, hey, do you want to add you to bring a something to this check piece of music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Oh, that looks more impressive. Way more impressive. Look at him. Jumping. Jumping. So, uh, word, why you in Atlanta? Tell Because, the uh, they got big booty bitches. Word. Simple as that? Simple as that. So you heard about this, or you know fact <laughs> oh, I this see the big booty bitches. <laughs> I've tasted the Georgia Oh, bitches. okay. True indeed. True indeed. I've tasted. I used to stay down here. Shout out to ATL. I'm just down here working with the cunning linguists. And this motherfucker with Natty trying to have a rap contest. Rap contest? Yeah, uh, and Spanish rap, so I had to rewrite my rap, and then I spit and then he my rap, his and shit. he wrote his, and then, he, and then he I heard his, and, and he wrote my shit. So, so we've been, this is the eighth know. hour we've been in here working on this on one verse. One verse. Rapper's still right. Rapper's still right. Yeah, rapper's still right. Yeah, rapper's still right.
let's go through the purses and sell the gifts from your mom house. They know you out here doing dirt for cash, but you the one unemployed a couple of dollars ain't gon' Blood on my palms, fingertips drip red The king ring victorious, the fellowship fled Them that led, get led embedded in pain The streets and cheeks yeah. like a We're working on some stuff. We're working on some group stuff. I would say absolutely next year something from the group will come out. Whether it's a full length or an EP, whatever that is, I don't know. Uh, I'm working on an instrumental record. Uh, me and Kenny are kind of working on like a, like a it's, I'm not saying it's electronic, but it's definitely not necessarily what you would expect from us instrumental record um, under the tab Dirty Decibels. So that's going to be more of kind of like a team tag team thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm working on side projects with other rappers. Uh, I'm working on a solo rap record. I mean, I have like five things in the box right now. So I just don't know what's going to get finished first. That's the way I'll say. I got like three of these. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one, of them, one of them's further than in the pot because all the beats are there. I'm doing, I'm doing a project with uh, Champagne Chew, who was on speaking solo and my solo, and uh, we're gonna do a whole project together. EP called uh, EP called Left Handed Cigarette. So that that'll be the next thing that I focus my energy on getting done because I have tunnel vision that way. So. I have to yeah, they call me Jr. <laughs> no, I can't I'm not, I have ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. He wanders everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this. Need some meat, Teddy? But it's, you know, we put it, I put everything in the oven, and I check in there once in a while. Whenever it's done, I get them up and I'm like, oh, it's done. Here you go. You know what I'm saying? Here you go, world. He rock a onesie, he think he fly pulling stunts in his undies But she my kryptonite, I know cryptic right I'm sitting back with a pipe getting ripped at night On the window pane, coldest rain My enemy, Miss Lois Lane She's 